Hawked is a brand new PvPvE extraction shooter, and with this complete beginner's guide, you will be ready for everything both the environment and players can throw at you. In this video, I will be covering everything you need to know from the main gameplay loop, strategies, and lesser known mechanics to get you on your feet as fast as possible, and I'll even throw in some tips and tricks at the end. But if you have any questions, you can find me live on Twitch, where I'll be streaming Hawked with exclusive early access drops enabled. Let's start our guide off by giving you some context to the Hawked story and environment. Hawked takes place on Exile, a mystical, storm-ridden island home to a long-lost human civilization. It's covered with temples and treasures, but is being invaded by reptilians known only as Disciples. These reptiles are searching for relics of terrible power, but someone must stop them. Introducing Grail, an organization who aim to recover the island's most valuable assets and protect them from the Disciple Horde. They can't find and secure the treasures alone, however, so they send in Renegades to retrieve the treasure on their behalf. Renegades who complete Grail contracts are heavily rewarded, and are even allowed to keep the powerful artifacts for themselves, but competition is tough, and many Renegades can be fighting over the same contract, giving the PvPvE environment. You play the part of a brand new Renegade recruit, and after customizing your character's appearance and gear loadout, you will be sent to the Grail submarine headquarters, named the Riftwake. Don't worry too much about selecting the best gear or cosmetics at this stage, as everything can be changed later on from the Riftwake, with many cosmetic and gear items to unlock down the road. If you would like to see an in-depth guide around gear, let me know down in the comments. At this point, you will have the option to play through a quick tutorial, which I recommend to get familiar with the very basics of the game, but this can always be replayed later from the Riftwake if you want to skip it for now. After completing or skipping the tutorial, you'll be sent to the headquarters. Once you arrive in the Riftwake, you will be placed in the main social hub, along with other players in your region. This is where you will spend most of your time between matches, so let's cover everything you can do here. Starting off with your heads up display, you can find game options to the top left, along with your Grail Plus status. Grail Plus is an in-game subscription, bought with the game's currency Geocache, and offers perks such as boosted XP per match, additional daily and weekly quests, and an additional carry slot for loot during your matches. More details about Grail Plus and Geocache can be found from the in-game store. In the top right, you will see the quick menu. This is used to access most of the useful parts of Hawked, including your loadout, friends list, shop, and more. Also in the top right, you will see your current balance of the three in-game currencies. From left to right, we have Geocache, which is the game's purchasable currency. This can be used in the shop for cosmetics, battle pass, or grail plus. Next, we have Wonderium and Hawks, both of which can be obtained for free by playing Hawked. These currencies are used for buying or upgrading gear, some cosmetics, boosters, and increasing loyalty level, but more on those later. In the bottom right, you will see your currently selected mode, between solos and trios, and your equipped exo and ward abilities with their respective rarities. In the bottom left, you will see all the current members of your group, along with their ready status, and any equipped artifacts with their respective rarities. If you have just started out, you may not have any artifacts to equip, but you can check this by opening the quick menu, going to loadout, and clicking on one of the artifact slots. You may notice the booster menu while you're here, but these aren't very useful in the early stages, as all the good ones unlock much later on, so don't worry if you have nothing equipped yet. Finally, you will see active missions or prompts on the left hand side. These are often tied with speaking to members of Grail, and will be helpful if you feel stuck, so have a run around and chat to the characters where possible. Often these conversations will be tied to the main Hawks storyline, and completing missions will grant rewards such as artifacts, currency, and additional loyalty XP. Leveling up your player and loyalty levels will unlock new aspects of the game, such as cosmetics, upgrading gear, or equipping more powerful boosters, so don't forget to explore the Riftwake between your matches. Running around the Riftwake will reveal branches off to different areas, such as your personal quarters, where you can access your loadout and appearance options, along with an option to replay the tutorial, and the firing range, where you can familiarize yourself with all the weapons, consumables, and mods you might find on Exile. More on these later. 
The firing range also contains a target trial if you want to put your skills to the test. This can be a great warm up and you can match make from here, so it's a win win. Some other notable areas are contracts, which are additional daily and weekly missions that grant you rewards and are tied to a rank system for bonus rewards at the end of a set time period, and the Grail Shop, where you can sell or deconstruct loot found on Exile, buy additional gear, boosters, artifacts, cosmetics, or increase your loyalty level by making generous donations to the Grail organization. Your loyalty level is mainly used to keep higher tier items locked away for a while, so if you have a bunch of hogs lying around, boosting your level can help you access them much faster, but don't stress over these in the early stages. At this point, you are ready for your first trip out to exile. Select your preferred mode and ready up to begin matchmaking, or go to the quick menu to invite your friends. If you're worried about random teammates getting in your way, or you are looking for an additional challenge, you can turn group fill off by going to settings, then game, and scrolling down to group fill. You will spawn on exile at a random location, and your main objective, outside any additional quests, is to find and secure treasure in the form of trinkets and artifacts, but first, you will want to find a weapon and some ammo. While renegades always carry their traverser, a multi-tool which can act as a melee attack or range attack when aiming down sights, finding an additional weapon on exile will greatly increase your chances of survival against both the disciples and other renegades out to grab the treasure before you. Fortunately, weapon caches can be found scattered across the island, and unopened caches will be marked on your map with this weapon icon. Ammo crates, on the other hand, are not marked on your map, but are often found close to weapon caches, so remember to open these up before moving on. There are four main categories of weapon you can find on Exile, each with their own types of ammo, and a set rarity ranging from green at the worst to purple at the best. The weapon types are plain, efficient, energy, and specials that cannot be refilled and instead break or run out of ammo after a number of uses. You can carry up to two of these weapons in addition to your traverser, so try to combine close and long range weapons where possible. All of these weapons can be found in the firing range if you want to try them out in a safer environment. You will find that in the early stages of a match, you are much more likely to find lower rarity weapons, with the more powerful variants becoming more common as you get closer to unlocking the final vault. When you or another team opens the final vault, the island's weather will drastically change and more powerful weapons will become much more common across the island, so don't underestimate looting weapon caches in the later stages of the match. Weapons are not the only things that you will find hidden inside the weapon caches though. Another type of item that can drop is mods, which are an important part of your kit on Exile. These little modifiers can be tested in the firing range, but will only last for the duration of the match you find and equip them in. You are able to apply three different types of mods simultaneously, but you cannot stack two of the same category. There are three types of mod. Personal mods, which can increase your health or reduce gear cooldowns. Weapon mods, which improve weapon handling or grant special perks. And shield mods, which increase your maximum shields. These mods give you a noticeable advantage in combat, both against the disciples and enemy renegades, so make sure to pick them up. Along with these mods, you may find consumables in weapon caches. Consumables can come in various forms, and give you the edge in tense situations, but are gone when used. They come in four main types, including food, which must be eaten immediately to grant benefits such as healing, exposing loot, or exposing nearby enemies, grenades, which can be collected and thrown to deal explosive damage, block all shields, or stun enemies, healing, that comes in the form of stackable items which can be used at any time to heal, and self-revives, which will revive you automatically when knocked. Most of the time these weapon caches and ammo boxes will be defended by a handful of disciples however, so let's have a look at the most common ones you will encounter. While disciples are not very dangerous in the early stages of the match, and most of the time you can completely ignore them when passing by, you should be able to identify them from a distance so you know what dangers to look out for. The first enemy you are likely to encounter is the Ripclaw, a common foot soldier of the Disciple Horde. They are ill-tempered, 
hot-blooded, and known to almost always be fighting, either between themselves or against renegades. Ripclaws are generally quick and nimble, and they become especially dangerous in numbers with their melee attacks. The Croaker is another common foot soldier of the Disciple Horde. They are closely related to the Ripclaw, so they are also known to be ill-tempered and hot-blooded. Unlike their melee counterparts, instead of closing into attack, they shoot magic fireballs from a distance. Ripclaws and Cloakers are often found together around Exile, especially near weapon caches. Fanatics are the first of the special disciples that you should watch out for. They come with special abilities to heal their reptilian allies, or protect them entirely for a brief period of time, so prioritize these guys when in combat. Slab Scales are one of the most fearsome enemies around Exile, and are the disciples' mightiest warrior. Towering above the average human, this Slab Scale is a bulky reptilian, favoring brawn over brain when going for the attack. Don't be fooled by his size though, as his movements are quick and can take any renegade by surprise with his rolling, rushing, and jumping abilities. All of these disciples come in three different versions, common, elite, and champion, with each version making them more difficult to take down and more effective in their combat. More elite disciples can be spotted wearing additional armor to protect themselves from renegade attacks, increasing the amount of damage required to take them out. Shroudbuskers are small, agile disciples that are famous for their treasure hoarding abilities. They burrow underground where they keep their stores of shiny things. They love to steal, nab, and be a pest in general. Take them out to acquire some of their stolen loot when they pop out, but be quick as they will try to avoid conflict. Knuckleheads are not known for being the smartest of the disciples, but what they lack in brains, they make up for in strength, and they utilize their size and oversized heads for devastating ramming attacks. They try their best to chase you down, but because they get overexcited, they run out of energy at times and need to take a breather. This is the best moment to fight back. A unique relationship exists between the Knuckleheads and the Shroudbasker, with the latter using the Knucklehead to do their bidding by steering them into combat. While Shroudbaskers usually avoid conflict, when paired with a Knucklehead, they spit a slowing goo at you, preventing you from escaping the follow-up attacks. Grizzlebacks are bigger, better, and nastier. The Grizzleback is a verifiable beast on the battlefield, and with an upgrade in armor and weaponry, it makes this disciple one of the toughest on Exile. They are known to protect the most valuable temples and shrines on Exile, taking on renegades by rushing them using their massive weapons to unleash a combination of swinging attacks, devastating jumps, and crush rolls. Some of these disciples, such as Grizzlebacks, will not spawn at random, and instead only appear during certain challenges found around the island. To unlock the final vault containing the artifact, you will first need to find a combination of five glyphs. Each glyph is concealed behind an ancient challenge, which you will need to complete in order to unlock them. There are many different challenges which can come in the form of puzzles, precision tasks, and taking out hostile disciples. But if you are ever unsure on how to complete one, the mission progress on the left hand side will walk you through each step of the current challenge. After completing your challenge, collect your deciphered glyph and have a quick look around for trinkets which are likely to be hidden nearby before moving on to the next one. These trinkets are very valuable and can be sold for hawks or deconstructed for Wanderium at the Grail vendor in the Riftwake. Each completed challenge will also reward you with a new random passive ability such as health regeneration, increased damage to disciples, larger shields, and much more. These passive abilities stack together, making you stronger with the more challenges you complete. There will be some occasions where other renegades have already completed the challenge you were sent to. Don't worry though, as glyphs can be deciphered, but not stolen. This means that you can collect your progress without having to complete the challenge, and head straight on to the next one. As some challenges require you to shoot at targets, or take out disciples, you can end up making quite some noise, and this could alert nearby renegades to your position. Being caught off guard by enemy players, especially when dealing with disciples, can quickly mean the end of your match, 
So one thing I like to do is use my Traverser tool to complete these challenges. The Traverser is super quiet and comes with infinite ammo, making it the perfect tool for puzzles and weak disciples. Just watch out if you hear a somebody's close callout. Fortunately, there are a number of movement mechanics that you can use to make yourself less of an easy target for other players and traverse exile much faster. The most basic forms of movement are sprinting or surfing on your hoverboard, both of which use the sprint button, with dodging assisting you when on foot at the cost of half of your stamina bar per roll. There are however many obstacles around the island that you can interact with using your traverse at all, but don't require any stamina at all. These objects and locations are marked with a yellow paint, indicating that you can either climb up them, like these ledges, or use your interact key to pass larger gaps such as missing bridges, zip lines, and even waterfalls. Interacting with these objects can make you a much harder target to hit in combat, lead to a high ground advantage, or even just make your exploration that much faster by offering you a shortcut to your next objective. While you are exploring Exile, you may come across special events. In-game events, such as caravans, can reward you heavily for taking out all hostiles and securing the Disciples' treasure chest. In this example, you will first need to remove the armor from the caravan by shooting the blue crystals, while the Disciples attempt to protect it. Once all the armor has been removed, you will need to battle the caravan itself. Watch out for both the ranged attacks, which leave a toxic substance on the ground, and the melee attacks if you get too close. Fortunately, now that you have removed the armor, you have exposed the giant weak spot on its back. Pour enough damage into the caravan, and the treasure chest will unlock, granting you an artifact and more. Watch out though, as players are alerted when a caravan is nearby, and the battle will give off a lot of noise, so you could easily find yourself dealing with more than just the disciples. If you succeed and collect the treasure, the artifact carrier will be marked on the map for all other renegades to see. While caravans and other events can be great ways to grab an artifact, your main objective remains looting the ancient vault, which will contain higher tier loot. Once you have deciphered all five glyphs, you can make your way to the main vault to claim your hard-earned treasure. Take note of where the vault is on the map, as you will often be forced to take set entrances marked as a door icon on your map. These entrances can act as choke points on the way in, and more importantly, on the way out. So watch out for potential ambushes from the other renegades, or set up your own trap for enemies inside. Just watch out they don't take a different exit. If you are the first to reach the vault, you will have to shoot the glyph icons in the order displayed at the top of your screen. The doors will then begin to unlock, which will alert other renegades on the island that the vault is opening, and the weather will drastically change, marking the start of the endgame, where everything becomes a little more hectic. Once open, make sure you grab both the main artifact and the three chests filled with hawks before moving on. But beware that the artifact carrier will be marked on the map for everyone to see, so don't waste too much time exploring now. Whether you secured the main artifact inside the vault, an artifact from an in-game event, or even just found a bunch of trinkets, you can take your loot to an extraction point to securely send it back to base, preventing anyone from taking it from you. Extraction points will be marked on the map with this icon, and the closest two will show up on screen after picking up an artifact. Once you arrive at the extraction point, you will need to capture it. To do this, you will need at least one member of your team to be within the extraction radius for 30 seconds, which will highlight the extraction icon in red on other Renegades maps. If any opposing Renegades enter the radius during your capture time, your progress will be paused. Once captured, however, all of your artifacts and trinkets will automatically be secured, and you will have the option to extract yourself by interacting with the center portal or continue to explore the island. Collected Hawks and Wonderium will remain in your pockets though, and will only be secured when you return to the Riftwake. There is no limit on how many times you can extract found items. Each extraction point also contains a shop where you can buy weapons, ammo, or a random item with yellow tokens collected during your match. You can find your token balance in the top left. These tokens are awarded for exploring the island, taking out both disciples and renegades, 
completing challenges, and even using your traverser to parkour around the island. These shops are available during the entire match, which your character won't hesitate to remind you about, and do not require you to capture the extraction point to use. These shops can be useful for a quick stock up, but I rarely find myself needing them before extracting anyway. Once the island's main artifact has been extracted, all players will have a 5 minute time limit to get out of there, or find themselves eliminated on the spot. This is plenty of time to get to an extraction point, so don't sweat it if you take a detour or two. At the end of your match, you will go through some summary screens that will recap all of your secured loot, quests and battle pass progress, along with a full scoreboard at the time of your extraction, so you can compare your stats with other players before arriving back at the Riftwake. I suggest you take a moment after each match to go over your newly acquired gear or visit the Grail vendor to clean up your trinkets and doubles. This will allow you to see what you can upgrade more easily and have you running higher tier gear much faster. Remember to also speak with the Grail members to complete existing quests or get new ones for your next trip out to exile. Now that you know the basics on how to play Hawks, here are some tips and tricks that helped me in my matches. If you are short on Hawks or one Dirim for upgrades, you can get way more of them in matches by doing certain tasks. Hawks are granted for eliminating disciples and completing challenges, so aim for more of a PvE playstyle if you're short. And one Dirim can only be found as crystal formations on Exile that you can collect as you are passing. I found these crystals were much more common near temples, so keep your eyes peeled. Currency is awarded to the whole team at the same time, so don't worry about who gets a final blow on Disciples, or who collects the crystals. Don't rush in to upgrade your gear to the highest level early on. These upgrades won't make a huge difference when you're fighting other low-leveled players, and you may find better artifacts and gear later on that will fit your playstyle more. While aiming down sights, you can swap shoulders by pressing the sprint key. This allows you to peek corners while exposing less of your body and can be super useful in fights against other players. You can maintain much more of your stamina when exploring Exile by sliding and jumping. This will mean you can travel faster for longer and reduce the chances of being caught out by enemy players with no stamina remaining. You can jump off ziplines at any time by pressing jump or crouch. This can be a lifesaver if enemy renegades are shooting at you as you are locked into a very predictable movement. While the PvE events can be rewarding, you want to focus on the main vault if you are searching for better artifacts. You will likely find new trinkets with the challenges anyway, so speedrunning the objectives can be a good way of looting efficiently. Ammo boxes don't need to be opened, as you can just sprint through them to break the box and automatically pick up the ammo. This will speed up your looting process even more. If you see a question mark on your minimap, it means that there is some high tier loot buried nearby, and getting close to it will reveal a search radius. Run around inside this radius until a mound of dirt pops up, and you can dig there to get your loot. While surfing on your hoverboard, you cannot aim down sights, but you can unlock boosters that significantly reduce your hipfire spread, making you much faster and much more accurate. There is even a passive ability that allows you to use your hoverboard on land for a short duration after exiting the water, which is unlocked by completing challenges. These changes substantially improve the usefulness of your hoverboard and allow you to either escape an enemy team or aggressively push them, taking them by surprise. Downed teammates can be automatically picked up with one of the artifacts, so keep an eye on any hidden enemies you downed as they could be picked up passively and catch you off guard mid-fight. Catching enemies midway through a PvE encounter is by far the easiest way to take them out, so pick your engagements carefully and watch your back during challenges. If a teammate is finished off, you can revive one or both of them at a revive station. These stations don't require anything to activate as long as you stand within the radius for the full duration. Revived players regain some ammo, but not weapons. As they will be easy targets at first, Keep an eye out for any enemy renegades who may be following you to finish the squad off entirely. I'll be streaming the game live on Twitch with exclusive drops enabled, so if you have any questions or just want to see some gameplay, pop in and get your free in-game rewards. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.